All right, so for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient, Miles. And Miles presents with a past medical history of type 2 diabetes, mellitus, and obesity. The therapist would like to address the patient's comorbidities with exercise using CDC guidelines. Which of the following is associated with the greatest likelihood of a behavior change? All right, so we have A, willingly taking home educational materials about exercise. B, setting up a personal calendar with blocked out time for exercise. C, attending an informational seminar about obesity. And D, is the ability to state the benefits of exercise and the consequences of being sedentary. All right, so let's go ahead to the top like we always do. We have Miles presents with a past medical history of type 2 diabetes, mellitus, and obesity. Now, you all who have been following me for a while now, you've been listening to the podcast, you should already know that type 2 diabetes mellitus, all right, is one of those conditions that you have to know for the MPTE obesity as well, all right? Those both come up. I'm not going to go too far into that. I mean, those are pretty straightforward uh, conditions that we deal with. Now, it says the therapist would like to address the patient's comorbidities with exercise using CDC guidelines. So from that statement, before I even move on, I want to make sense of it. I want to make sure that I'm following it and I'm understanding exactly what the test maker wants me to do. Let me read that again. It says the therapist would like to address the patient's comorbidities with exercise using CDC guidelines. So right now, the therapist wants to address the type 2 diabetes. We know that exercise is a big part of controlling blood sugar and helping the person, you know, get out of this whole diabetes mellitus, all right? Um, also, obesity. Exercise is one of the key components of, of, of improving uh, weight loss and helping people lose weight. So that's perfect. I understand that. And then CDC guidelines, if you're not familiar with that, definitely check that out on the CDC website, all right? Now, it says, which of the following is associated with the greatest likelihood of behavior change. Now, that's going to be really interesting right there. All right, this is the stem right now. It says, which of the following is associated with the greatest likelihood of behavior change? So in order for us to get this question right and even know what the heck we're talking about, you have to understand, well, what are the stages of behavior change? What influences behavior change? Because that's what it's going to come down to. How many of y'all are familiar with the trans theoretical model of change or these stages of change? You have to understand that in order to answer this question correct. Now, I'll give you a little bit of background on it. That trans theoretical model is talking about uh, the pre-contemplation stage. All right. Then the patient goes into the contemplation stage. Then they go into preparation. Then they go into action and maintenance. All right. Pre-contemplations where the patient doesn't really want to change. All right. This is before they even start really considering to change. It's called a pre-contemplation. Then we got contemplation where the patient is thinking about starting to change in the nearer future. Then you have preparation where the patient is actually making the necessary uh you know, changes that they need right now or preparation methods in order to make sure that they're successful in changing, all right? They're preparing to actually make the change. They've committed to changing. Then you have action, which is the patient actually doing whatever action it is, whatever behavioral change you're doing it, right? And then the last one is the maintenance stage where the patient is now continuously doing whatever behavioral change that was, whether it was stop smoking or exercising regularly or whatever, they're in a maintenance stage, all right? Does that make sense, y'all? That's the trans-theoretical model of change. Now, let's go ahead and look at our answer choices. It says, A, willingly taking home educational materials about exercise. B, is setting up a personal calendar with blocked out time for exercise. C, is attending an informational seminar about obesity. And D, is the ability to state the benefits of exercise and the consequences of being sedentary. All right, so A, willingly taking home educational materials about exercise. You know, is that the greatest likelihood? Does that have the greatest likelihood of, you know, creating a behavioral change? Just willingly taking home educational materials. What that's really saying to me is that, 
you know, potentially the patient's in the contemplation stage. Like they're thinking about changing, right? They're thinking about it because they're willingly taking it home. But, you know, it's not like they're actually definitely going to do whatever change that is, like start exercising regularly. Well, this particular patient, just because they take home the educational materials, that doesn't mean that they're actually going to change. I mean, for all I know, they just wanted to make me happy and they just took home the educational materials. So already, I mean, A, okay, potentially, but I already don't like that answer. It's just not a strong one. Okay. Now let's look at B. B says setting up a personal calendar with blocked out time for exercise. Now, where does that fit? I want y'all to stop with me right now. Where does that fit in that trans theoretical model that I was just talking about? Where where does that sound like? Is that pre-contemplation, not thinking about change? Is that thinking about change? Is that actually preparing, taking action, or maintaining? Well, you should be saying, well, this patient sounds like they would be in the preparation stage, right? They're preparing to take action. They haven't taken action yet because they haven't started with the regular exercise. All right, so we're in the preparation stage. Now, I like that answer better than A because A is probably in the contemplation stage. All right, so right now, B is the best answer. It's not necessarily the answer. It's the best. Let's go ahead and look at C. C says attending an informational seminar about obesity. All right. So if the patient's going to attend an informational seminar, more than likely they're willing to do that, then they're considering change. Does that necessarily mean that they're like setting up a schedule, like preparing for it? No, they're, they're getting information about it. Like they're considering the change, but they haven't necessarily made a commitment to it. It's not saying that. They're just attending an informational seminar about obesity. All right. And here's the other thing. They're attending an informational seminar about obesity. But remember, we really are trying to address the obesity with exercise. They're not even attending an informational seminar about how exercise can help obesity. They're just attending it about obesity alone. All right. So I don't like C. If I was going to put that in the the, uh, trans theoretical model of change, I would put that somewhere along the lines of them just contemplating it. They're not making a commitment. They're not making like a schedule. They're not preparing. They're not uh, uh, acting or maintaining right now. I don't like C. Still, B is the better answer. Let's look at our final answer, D. It says the ability to state the benefits of exercise and the consequences of being sedentary. Now, I will say, (laughs) when most people are looking at this question, it came down to B and D. So where do you put D as far as that trans-theoretical model of change? The patient is able to state the benefits of exercise and the consequences of being sedentary. Hmm. I mean, when I really think about that, can somebody who's not willing to change at all still be able to state the benefits and consequences of being sedentary? I mean, can they do that? I mean, my answer is yes. A patient who's totally not willing to change at all can still tell me what the benefits of exercise are and the consequences of being sedentary. All right. And so this patient still might be in the pre-contemplation stage. Like, they don't even want to change. We don't know that for sure, but I can definitely tell you that this patient is definitely not in the preparation stage. They're not in the acting stage necessarily. Nothing in this answer is really giving me that 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 feeling that this patient is anywhere beyond just the pre-contemplation stage. Nothing is telling me that, all right? And so D, I don't like it. I have the most... Uh, Just the value and the most support for selecting B as in boy, setting up a personal calendar with blocked out time for exercise. The patient is acting. The patient is preparing. I should say they're preparing. They're not acting just yet, right? Because they didn't actually do the exercise. They haven't started that. They're preparing. They're in the preparation stage. And so our final answer here is B as in boy. All right, for those of you who got this question correct, congratulations. These types of questions are not easy, 
because you really have to understand the deeper concept that the test maker is testing you on. And I will tell you now, possibly in PT school, somewhere in one of those classes, you learned about this trans theoretical model and you learned about the progression of how a patient moves towards some type of behavior change. All right. And we have to understand where's our patient at now? Pre-contemplation, possibly. They don't want to change. Then they get into the contemplation stage where they're considering changing in the near future. Then preparation where right now they're preparing to make the change. The acting stage where they're actively doing it and the maintaining it where they've been doing it and now they're just maintaining the action. All right, that's trans theoretical model of change. Why is it important? Why do we need to know it for the MPTE? Well, you gotta know where your patient is in their headspace. What's their mindset? Are all the things that you're telling them, like trying to force them to act and they're not even ready to change yet? All right, we have to know where the patient is and that's what we need to understand for the MPTE.